Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily show, where we show you one cool thing, which we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan. This is Jim Fisher. Now, uh, if you're watching us live on Facebook, then uh, thank you for joining. Please ask questions, give comments. Social Pete is here. He will read out your questions. Uh, Jim knows uh, pretty much everything there is to know about cameras, lenses, drones, that sort of stuff. I know random things about technology, so you can just try me. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. Uh, consider coming over to Facebook at 10 a.m. Eastern on weekdays on PC Mag's Facebook page to join the discussion. Uh, what we have today are things that a lot of different smartphone owners can use. Uh, Jim, what what am I looking through? What are we talking about today? You're looking through a, a 2x conversion lens for smartphones from Moment. Uh -huh. That's the new Tele, they call it. Uh, that is the yeah, that's the that's the Tele. Uh, they uh, mount on a case with a little bay in it, and they're available for iPhone users with the six and newer, including the ten, uh, Galaxy S8 and Note 8, as well as Google Pixel XL and Google Pixel 2 normal and or I guess Google Pixel, you know, the XL and the non-XL versions, versions one and version two. Now each has a dedicated case to mount the lens. Now I think I think one of the things that's most interesting about these uh, moment smartphone lenses is that now a lot of the cases and a lot of the smartphone lenses out there are uh, individual lenses, but this is a multi-lens system, right? Yeah, they sell they're not sold in a bundle, so we, we looked at them individually. There are four different lenses. Uh, there is the 170 degree Superfish, mm -hmm. new Superfish. There's an 18 millimeter equivalent, uh, full, frame, full frame field of view, 18 millimeter equivalent, the new wide. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the Tele, which is a 2x conversion lens. Mm -hmm. So 60 millimeter roughly, depending mm -hmm. on what your phone lens is. And you've got a 10x magnification macro, which gets you get, lets you get real close to stuff. And now with the, with the, we were talking about this earlier, with the uh, Tele, if you put that on uh, the Note 8, or the iPhone 10, that makes your tele lens a 4x, essentially. It does, it does, yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, so what is, now are these higher quality lenses than a lot of the, uh, a, a lot of the more generic smartphone lens cases you're gonna see out yeah, there? Yeah, they are, and they're priced accordingly. Mm -hmm. Each lens is either 90 or $100, mm -hmm. and then you've gotta look at, you know, 30 bucks for a case. There is for iPhone users only, there's a battery case available for 100 Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for for if you're an Android guy, you've got you know the normal the normal plastic case that's just a normal case. And now, do these have to work with particular software, or do they work well in any camera application? You can use them with any camera app. There is an iOS app. There's no Android app. For a moment, the iOS app, the real advantage is it applies some corrections. If you're shooting JPEG, it lets you shoot RAW, which the normal iPhone app does not let you do, mm -hmm. and it lets you tag the metadata. So you can say, I'm using the macro lens, or I'm using the wide lens, so when you go back and look at your shots, you can, you'll, it'll be in the exit data. Now, these are called the, the new wide, the new tele, the new yep. superfish. Are there an old wide and They're now called superfish? original. Okay. Uh, and they, they are, uh, I never shot with those. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not have the same full case mounting system. Uh, I think they had like a little strap that went around, uh, or some, you know, a partial case to mount them, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I prefer. I prefer cases that, you know, for the lenses that are easy, make them easy to mount. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've seen some weird ones over the years. I've seen, we had one from Photo Jojo that actually mounted via string, and I could never get it to line up <laughs> over the lens right. It just was, it was a bad idea. So why don't you show me how easy these lenses are to attach, and then I hear that Zach, our cameraman, managed to set this up so that you folks on the feed might actually be able to see what it looks like from the lens. All right, I'm gonna start with the macro lens okay, here. Okay, okay. It can go over either, but I usually use the, uh, you wanna put it on the main lens for the most part because uh -huh. your image quality is gonna be better. And we're gonna take it to this little Amiibo guitar man here uh -huh. and see how close we can get. And the answer is real, real close. Yeah, you are, you are basically, that light hood is basically over the Amiibo's head. This yeah. is like a one inch distance. Yeah, and the nice thing about this is, is this, this hood is a little translucent, milky opaque type thing. So the light comes in and it softens the light as well. Mm -hmm. So you've got a nicer uh, look. So, are, we getting, are we getting the live view Yeah, of it's this? looking terrific. It's looking okay, absolutely terrific. So uh, that's the macro. Now why don't you show the difference between 
uh, your iPhone's regular view and the wide. Just one, sure, one more thing here. Okay, okay. Just gonna show here on this fast charge pad, which Whoa. is, yeah. Uh, the nice thing about the hood there, if you're shooting something flat, you put the hood right up against there, mm -hmm. and that's your focus distance. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we can we can look at the normal iPhone, the naked mm -hmm. lens, versus, you know, here is, hey look, it's Social Pete. Mm -hmm. I know, this is dangerous. And now you're putting on, which one are you putting on now? I'm putting the wide lens on, sorry, okay. sorry about yep. it. Yep. There we go, and now there's the wide field of view. This will be better for the YouTube viewers later who can go back yep. and forth and see the two field of views. And it'll be easier for me to take it off and show mm -hmm. you the difference. Just quick change there. Nice, so nice. So there's your conversion. Yeah, and this really reminds me of uh, people who have watched uh, a lot of my videos might know that I'm kind of a fan of uh, LG's uh, dual uh, dual cameras, dual camera smartphones with wide angle lenses. Right. The difference is, mm -hmm. whereas the LG wide angle lens is eh quality. Yeah, exactly. This macro, uh, I'm sorry, this Much wide, nicer. this 18 millimeter wide, is very very sharp. Yes. I yes. was I was really. I mean, you can tell it's a really. It's the largest of the four almost. Mm -hmm. It's really well corrected. There's no introduced distortion, and you're not really losing anything from your already pretty mm -hmm. good smartphone image quality when you use it. So now let's go to the Superfish. And now we were talking in the room before this started about why would people want this kind of extreme fish eye? When are people using this kind of lens? If you're backed up in a corner, trying to get a group shot, you know, mm -hmm. you can get really super wide stuff. Mm -hmm. If you're the type of adventurous person who's actually gonna mount your phone to something and try to use it as a GoPro, which mm -hmm. I don't recommend, just get a GoPro, uh, you know, that would be something to get the uh, ultra wide field of view. Mm -hmm. Now the fisheye, as you can see, is much, much wider. Yeah. Uh, and you get that fisheye distortion. Yeah, there's crazy curvature on what should be straight lines of things. Yeah, uh, the optical quality on that is not as good as the wide. Mm -hmm. It just softens everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you could, But you're also compressing a much larger field of view in the frame use with, using the same resolution, so that's also gonna mm -hmm. automatically hurt your detail a little bit. Okay, and then finally, since we've done three of them, we should do the fourth one. Let's 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 All tack right. on the telly. You know, we're actually gonna put the telly on the telly. Uh-huh. Why not? Uh, now we get super telly. All right, so now I just gotta tap the 2X button on my phone. Uh-huh. I think, why is this? What is going on here? Oh, I'll tell you what's going on. Uh-huh. I'll tell you exactly what's going on. The iPhone doesn't have enough light to actually natively use its uh, 2X lens. I'll switch ah. here to the Moment app, mm -hmm. which actually lets me select the actual lens I'm using. Or not, what did I do wrong? So now you point out in the review though that the telly is primarily for people who have single lens phones that don't have a native 2X capability to give them a 2X capability. And so that would be things like the iPhone 8 or the go. Samsung Galaxy S8 or the uh, Pixel 2. Um, that what you're doing right now, and uh, Pete, you can switch over to the feed now. He's got it running. What you're doing right now is a little bit of an extreme use of this. Yeah. yeah. No, and you can see this is an iPhone 8 Plus, so the 2X lens is not stabilized. So you got my handheld jitters here mm -hmm. all. If you're using this with a 10, with the, with the optical stabilization mm -hmm. on the 2X lens, you'd see a little bit more smooth movement. But once more, like if you're using it with a Galaxy S8 or a yeah. Pixel 2 or another single lens phone that has OIS, right. it gives it the 2X. Right, we can switch over to the 1X lens on the smartphone and then mm -hmm. put the 2X lens on here, mm -hmm. which is not something you'd ever do because your 2X you lens, have a 2X lens by yeah. itself is better image quality than your 1X lens plus this conversion. Uh -huh. But you can see how the uh, OIS is involved yeah. now. It's a, it's yeah, a little this is the stabilization. I've still got a little jitter from handheld, but uh -huh. because you've got such an extreme for the phone focal length. Mm -hmm. And we've got some flare going on here because we've got studio lights okay. just blasting into the lens. Now it looks like we've got some questions. Do you have to buy each of these separately? Yes. Yeah, there's no bundle available. Each lens comes with a little pouch and a matching cap. Mm -hmm. So you can protect it when you're not using it. Does, uh, but yeah, each one is either ninety or hundred dollars. So you have to buy the case separate from the lens. And the case too? is separate. The case is thirty wow. bucks. So you're looking at you know, if you get the battery case, which is a hundred, you're looking at five hundred bucks here all in, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. which is pretty extreme. Now I have to say, you said you're looking at five hundred bucks here all in. At what point do you just start saying just go buy a real camera? At five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah if, when you're if you're looking to spend that much, get a Canon G7X Mark II or Sony RX100. Three, which are premium smart uh, compact cameras with one-inch sensors that will uh -huh. blow 
all these lenses away. Okay, okay. But if you just want to add a macro lens or add a wide lens or add a fisheye lens, you know, 150 bucks is not as crazy. Yeah, yeah, I think I think the point is like we are showing off and we're reviewing all four of these lenses, but there aren't a lot of people who are going to buy all four of these lenses. You're gonna buy the one you want. Yeah. Uh, let's take another question. To clarify, is this just for iPhone? Nope, uh, the cases are available for iPhone 6 and newer, as well as Android phones, Galaxy S8, S8 Plus, Note 8, Google Pixel and Pixel XL, both the first and second versions of those. And, uh, and I mean, we can assume that, now can we assume that, I'm not gonna say we can assume, can we assume that, for instance, when the Galaxy S9 is announced at the end of this month, uh, they will announce a case for that? It's a pretty safe assumption. Okay. I mean, it's not gonna be every Android phone, but those high-end ones that, that are the most popular are gonna make sense for them to make a case for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, uh, any more questions out there? I think we're all set. Okay, so now, um, so now these are, now would you say these are the best add-on lenses in general for smartphones? In general, they're the best ones I've used. Mm -hmm. I've used, we have reviewed some other ones that are like one star or two star reviews. Uh, we gave the Tele three and a half stars, mm -hmm. gave the other three lenses four stars, and mm -hmm. we did give macro, the macro lens an editor's choice. Mm -hmm. uh, the wide and the macro are my two favorite. Okay. Uh, the Tele, I, just shooting that tight on a smartphone is not, Super practical, as far as I'm concerned. Just uh -huh. the, I mean, you're you're holding a slab. Mm -hmm. It's harder to hand hold. And fisheye, you either love fisheye or you don't. Yeah, I mean, I personally, it's I personally love the I, I personally love the idea of the wide because especially if you have one of the phones that already has a 2x Tele, you know, that gives you the three different modes yep. uh, for composition and for different settings, and that gives you a lot of flexibility. And we gave the macro the editor's choice because. That's one place where really all phones fall shy. It's yes. like that super high magnification macro look. You can do some really fun stuff with depth of field with it. You can get some nice textures if you want to like go up to graffiti on the street and like get that paint, you know, mm -hmm. texture on the stone wall. You get those kind of images. If you want to see Jim's photos of paint chips, uh, they are in the full review on PCMag.com. We have four reviews of these four different lenses. The macro gets an editor's choice, but these are all getting very good reviews. These are choice lenses for your high-end smartphone. Um, you can look up the reviews on PCMag.com. Any more, any final questions? Someone, I, we always get this sort of question. Why wouldn't someone just get a proper camera? Uh, I would get a proper camera probably. However, I'm not everyone. Yeah, well, so just, I can I can partially answer yeah. that, okay? You wouldn't get a proper camera because um, if all you want is one of these, that's $150. And a good proper camera nowadays costs 400? 400 and up. Yeah, 400 and up. Um, also, your smartphone is the camera you always have with you. You're not carrying two devices. So if you are, oh, and the smartphone is connected. So if you are the kind of person who is taking photographs uh, primarily for social networks that you want to upload on the spot or frequently, um, if you are looking just to enhance your smartphone's uh, image taking ability for less than the price of a camera, if you don't want to carry an extra device, these are all reasons to get one of these lenses as opposed to shelling out for uh, a real camera, which will give you better image quality, but at the cost of those conveniences. It looks like we have one more question. Jim, who is your favorite photographer? Oh, wow, that's a good question. Uh, Bruce Davidson, maybe? I, I really like dig his stuff. Uh, his subway stuff from the 70s in New York is great. Helen Levitt's great. Uh, Henri, Henri Cartier Persson, you know, you've got to go for the old French masters, but uh, probably Davidson. Okay, great. Well, thank you all for watching. This has been one cool thing. Uh, if you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you are on Facebook, we will be back at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow with another cool thing for you.